Welcome to the Scoop School podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host. He still thinks that Napoleon Bonaparte's real name was Neapolitan Spoons Apart. The ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day ice cream lovers, my name's Steve Christensen. Welcome to this episode of the podcast, video cast and podcast running at the same time. You can have a look at uh, iTunes to pick up the audio and of course our YouTube channel on scoopschool.com to have a look at the video. Now we've got a great uh, topic for you today. We're talking about food cost, where your food cost should be. But before we jump into that, I do want to thank our sponsor, which is Lockhead Vanilla. Lockhead Vanilla are a three generation company over 100 years old, based out of St. Louis, Missouri. Our home town here for our Scoop School facility and they do a great great job of blending and giving you the best quality vanilla extracts you can whether you're after a pure vanilla extract which by the way prices are through the roof right now you might want to look at their vanilla flavor options their vanilla vanillin blends and also their natural and artificial blends a lot of great solutions for the punters out there particularly in this time of crisis in the vanilla world so if you want to uh, talk to the guys there talk to either John, George, Matt, or Darren, uh, you can go to lockheadvanilla.com. That's L O C H H E A D, lockheadvanilla.com. Don't say Lockheed Vanilla, that's what everyone does, it drives them crazy. Okay, so we're talking about food costs this particular podcast episode and where your food costs should be. Now, if you're just in the business and getting going, it's important for you to be able to concentrate on your operations first. If you're in your first month or so, then I'm not too concerned about food cost or waste because really the operations is where it needs to be. But as you're developing your systems, knowing when your busy times are, when your non-busy times are, and getting into the process of ordering products more efficiently, you should be able to spend some time focusing on your food cost. Now, before I tell you what it should be, let me tell you how to calculate it out. Everything that you make in your store and everything you hand over to your customer has a cost to you. So if you're handing over, let's say, a hot fudge sundae, you're looking at a cup, you're looking at the lid or maybe half a lid, the cost of a half a lid if you're only giving out half at any given time, as in uh, one customer gets a lid, one doesn't. You've also got your spoon and your napkin, you've got your mix, you have your vanilla. That mix, by the way, is your product landed. It's not just the mix price, it's how much it costs to get to you so far as freight. You've got your mix cost, your vanilla cost, your flavor cost, your hot fudge cost, your whipped cream, your nuts, and your cherry. And you should have a spreadsheet that basically has all of that included. If you do not know what your cost is for every single menu item you have on your menu, you're already going to be struggling because the idea of knowing your food cost percentage really starts with knowing your food cost. So in the show notes, I've attached an Excel spreadsheet that I want you to use, which basically has every single ice cream uh, product known to man on this spreadsheet with uh, uh, the ability to be able to punch in your mix, your flavor, your vanilla, your toppings, your cream, nuts, cherry, uh, cup, spoon, napkin, and calculate out the food cost. That's very important. That's the very first step that you need to do in order to get a handle on your food cost. Once you've done that, then you can calculate out your food cost percentage per item. And that's calculated out very simply by taking your cost and dividing it by your selling price. So for example, if a chocolate sundae or a hot fudge sundae costs you $1.08 and you sell it for $3.99, then you divide $1.08 by $3.99, $3.99, and you'll get that food cost percentage, whatever it is. It'll be a 0.27 or 0.28. And that 0.28 or 27% is the food cost for that particular item. Now, as a general rule in the food service industry and in the ice cream industry, your food cost should be, or I, I generally say you should cap it out at under 30%. So the idea is that that 30% cap is an aggregate of your menu and not per item. Because you might find a very simple vanilla cone, a five ounce vanilla cone, may have a food cost percentage of let's say 17%. But a banana split that has a lot more expensive ingredients on it might have a food cost percentage of about 38% but you're gonna sell a lot more cones than you will banana splits, and so that'll average out. Now that average is where it needs to be under 30%. 
Now that 30% average, or the 30% cap I should say, is important because if you're over the top of that, every percentage point you are over 30, you are taking percentage points or dollars out of your profitability. So it's important, number one, to have a look at the costing of all of the products that you have. Number two, do the calculation on either an aggregate or an average of your menu or over a particular sales period, whether it be a month, a quarter, or a year. Again, 30% should be your cap. Now there's only two ways in order to reduce that food cost percentage, two ways. The first of which is to increase your prices, which you should be doing at the end of the season or at the end of the year. We're going to talk about that in another episode. But the other is to decrease your cost. And you can decrease your cost by a number of different things. We're going to have another podcast and video on that. But really it's a matter of looking at decreasing costs or maintaining a lower cost, reducing theft, reducing uh, waste but maintaining quality. Quality of product is the key. It's one of your three ends. End product, engagement, environment, end product is one of the keys. So you've got to make sure you've got a good quality product without sacrificing uh, the, the, the cost of it. Talk to your vendors. Talk to those who might be able to be in competition with your vendors. Get better pricing. Go to trade shows. All of those things you can actually use or utilize to bring your cost of goods down. So that's all we have time. This uh, it's a, Look, it's a big, big topic and we can spend hours and hours on it and we do actually in Scoop School. But for now, what I want you to do is take this spreadsheet and when things settle down a little bit, I know we're in the thick of the season here, when things settle down, I want you to go through and cost out everything you have on your menu, divide the cost by the selling price, get an idea of where you're at per item on your food cost, and then do a nice average calculation. Hopefully it'll be under 30%. If not, contact me directly. We can certainly help you with some of the ways of looking at your profit and loss sheet and helping you out. Steve at scoopschool.com. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks again for Lockhead Vanilla for their sponsorship of this uh, podcast. Any questions, any comments, any concerns, send them to us, steve at scoopschool.com or at scoopschool.com. Great to see you again. We'll see you in the next podcast.